What's up guys, Lisa of Borderlands Bakery here and today I wanted to show you how I use my dough roller. This is a tabletop dough sheeter, also pasta roller, and I get questions every time I use it, so I wanted to just show you what it is and what I use it for. Traditionally, um, home bakers generally roll out their dough with like a guided rolling pin or a marble rolling pin. That all works fine. But when you start looking at the volume that some people do at home, it gets kind of out of hand, especially during the holidays. So I decided to bite the bullet and do some research on a tabletop roller that might work well for like a couple hundred cookies at a time when you're doing something where you want to, for example, um, ship stuff out for Christmas or do a cottage food bakery, something like that. So what I have for you today is a pasta line pasta sheeter, technically. It rolls, rolls your dough from very, very thin sheets all the way up to 12 millimeters thick. I did get mine on Amazon. If you want to get one, you can see the link down below. And it was kind of an investment at about $600 after shipping and handling, but 100% worth it. All right, so here's what it looks like from one side. It has these little uh, grooves on the side where you pull out and you kind of allow um, the whatever little knob to sit at a certain groove. And this indicates how thick you roll your dough at. So if you go all the way up, it's the thickest, 12 millimeters. And if you go all the way down to the other side, it's as thin as see-through pasta. So. I like to mark with a permanent marker kind of where I like my dough to be. That way it's consistent every single time. So this side has the grooves to indicate thickness and this side is your crank. So you always have to have it dangling off your table a little bit so your crank doesn't hit the side. And all you do is you turn it in order to feed the dough through the top. Now, as far as using this guy, I like to use dough in between pieces of plastic wrap. I do this anyway as a part of my regular process. This allows me to not have to add any additional flour when I roll out my dough, keeps my surfaces clean, and it's just really easy to move and manipulate and transfer your dough. You can cut it out, put your hand here, punch it back out as I will show you shortly. And then, you know, very little cleanup. You can rinse these off and recycle them as well. So here is how I roll my dough out. It's pretty thick right now. I rolled it right after making it at the thickest um, roll. And I always start out on the thickest and then gradually roll it more and more. So this dough has been sitting in the fridge for a while, but it's not super, super hard. I've let it come out of the fridge. It's still very cool to the touch, but it is pliable. You don't want to use it when it's too cold or else it's going to start cracking on you. And then you just kind of want to make sure that you relax the saran wrap. So I like to kind of pull it and just relax it so that it doesn't stretch too much and tear on both sides. Make sure one side is sealed up so your dough doesn't fall through or smash through. And then I can put it in either way right now. I feel like saran wrap catches better on the metal too. If you use parchment, it slides a little more, especially um, if you have any fat or anything, butter, stuff like that from uh, your, your dough. So with the, with the setting on its thickest, I just give it a little push to encourage it to go and a little pull at the same time and my dough slides out. So you can kind of see that it cracks a little bit. Um, it can happen if your dough is too cold or if it's a little too dry. In my case, this is really old leftover dough that I'm demoing with. But you just want to kind of smash it together and put it a couple notches thinner and repeat the process until you get to your desired thickness. Again, I'm adjusting um, my saran wrap, relaxing it, pushing it together where needed to kind of um, get any cracks to come back together. Here we 
go. And you can tell that it rolls out a little more each time. And you want to really have this be a smooth cranking motion. So I'm checking here. This is going to be my final rollout to the desired thickness. All right. Now it's to the desired thickness. And you just kind of want to feel it with your hands. Make sure it's even. Sometimes if you're not cranking smoothly, it might not be 100% even. So I'm going to put it through one more time for good measure, making sure my hand crank is not hitting the side of the table. And this is a pretty heavy piece of equipment, so the weight will pretty much hold itself down. So this is what I ended up with. So when I'm ready to cut, I simply, again, my dough is a little dry because it's leftover that I'm demoing with. I simply remove saran wrap, press down, give it a little jiggle, make sure it's all the way down. If it sticks in the cutter, fine. I'll just gently push it out with my hands and transfer it. All this is much easier when your dough is cool. And like that. And for example, let's just say that it doesn't stick to the cutter, right? One advantage of the saran wrap and not rolling on a surface is you could put your hand right under, punch your dough out. And much easier to transfer that way as well. And then when you're done, all I do is I smash the dough back up and on itself. Don't re-roll your dough out too many times because that gluten is going to get overworked and you're going to end up with a really wonky dough. And I just press it down to pretty thick, um, but not too thick so that it can't go through the feeder. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my roller and then we start the process again, starting with the most thick, feeding it through. And as your dough gets softer, this is gonna get a lot easier coming through that sheeter. And this has saved me so much time. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this super fast video about this sheeter that I absolutely love. I hope it can help you save some time. It definitely helped me. I prefer not to roll my dough by hand anymore at all. That's how spoiled I've become because of this guy. So if you have any other questions, I know it was a quick video and I know people are going to have questions, leave them down below and I will be happy to answer them for you. Until next time, bye guys!